Hey, everybody. I'm Karen Baggett. I know a lot of you in the room, and I have the honor today to introduce Chris Bouguet, who is presenting Harnessing the Potential of Generative Artificial Intelligence in Inclusive Education. Um, and Chris got an introduction over in the main room, but for those who are live streaming, uh, Chris is in the public schools in Loudoun County, Virginia. That's right. Okay. Nailed it. Um, and he's written multiple textbooks. I'll let him tell you a little more about that. He also is co-host of, oh my gosh, Talking I'll with you, Tech I'll podcast. Yes, Talking with yes. Tech. In fact, I'll show you right now. I, I don't want to mess up your mics, but I'm wearing the Talking with Tech t-shirt underneath the chilling with my Talking with Tech yes. podcast shirt. Sorry, I had it in my head, but Talking with Tech podcast, and it's all about AAC. They have multiple AAC users on the podcast, so definitely check that out Hank, and subscribe. Hank's been um, on the podcast. Hank Poor has been on the podcast. Probably Lance, Lance has, been has been on the, on the podcast. <laughs> Maybe Brad and Dan. Soon, Soon to be on the to podcast, be. Brad and Dan. So um, any questions that y'all have, I'll be sitting right here on the corner, just like holler my name. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, <laughs> who knows? Maybe I'll take the audio from this live stream. We'll put it on the podcast. We'll see how it goes. Okay. So without further ado, we'll let Chris take it away. Thank you, Karen. Uh, thanks everybody for being here. And thanks for your patience as I struggled through getting the captions to work. Uh, so this is the URL for the slide deck. So it is bit.ly slash Alabama AI 23. Uh, real clever there, Alabama AI, because we're talking about artificial intelligence. And then the year is 23. That's not my age. It's the, it's the, it's, that was it. Oof. oof. <laughs> I'm older than 23. <laughs> Uh, so this is your moment. Get the QR code. Did you, did, did you already pull it up while you were sitting here? Is it working? It yeah, it's working. It's working. How about on the live stream back there? Everyone out in the, on the live stream, is it working? Are you finding it? Uh, can you communicate with them? Live stream? Yeah. So they, they have a little chat for you if they have questions. So I can talk to them and you can I'll go. Questions awesome. Awesome. Okay. I've never presented on AI before. This is a brand new presentation. I get to do, I have the great, uh, Great privilege to get to present all over the country and different countries sometimes, but this is the first time I've actually presented on AI. Uh, and it's because Elizabeth said, how about we present on AI? It's like, sounds great. Let's do it. So, uh, and Beth over here mentioned the, the cool font. Artificial intelligence is written in this kind of cool font. That's how I'm actually going to start is I'm going to show you how I made that using AI. Does anyone know, by the way, or would that be, is this a new tool for everybody? Have you seen this before or not? Okay, what I'm gonna show you is um, actually a, a, a feature of Microsoft Word that has lived and existed for a long time um, called WordArt. Here's WordArt. You can go to WordArt and you can upload a picture into your WordArt and it'll present the picture in the background. Well, in there's a much fancier way of doing that now um, in Adobe. So this is called Adobe Firefly and it's in beta right now, but you can sign up for the beta. Um, and I have it right here. They just Google Adobe Firefly, firefly.adobe.com. And actually, I'm just going to go back. When you go to Adobe Firefly uh, and you sign up, again, free beta, um, there's something called text to image, which I'm going to show you in a second. But how I made the artificial intelligence is by going over to text effects. And I say generate. And down here is where I can put my text and what I want the effect to be. So, uh, educators, right? Are you, you, you're an educator, you're a speech therapist? Speech, speech, OT, OT, what else we got in the room? Self-contained, principal. All right, so tell me a vocabulary word that you would be teaching recently. Independence, okay. So I might type in the text independence here. And then I could describe what I want the word independence to look like. So what are some descriptive uh, words we might use to talk about independence? Uh, think, oh, okay. So I think, I thought you were thinking like independence, like Independence Day, like we're just after July 4th. So let's go with freedom. Um, what else? When you think, what's that? Fireworks. Fireworks. Maybe uh, strong. Maybe American flag for Independence Day. 
right? And when I hit generate, what it's going to do is take that word independence, make it in like bubble text, and it's going through its process here. And it's, in this case, you might see that there's some uh, fireworks and there's the American flag displaying on the inside. So how did I make artificial intelligence? I typed in artificial intelligence and I said circuits and wires and uh, I don't know, whatever else I said, right? Want to try it again? What's another one? What's another word? Something you're teaching recently in a lesson. You, do you teach words to kids? What? Dawn. Dawn, like the morning? Yeah, okay. So what are some nouns that go with uh, dawn? It doesn't have to be nouns. It can be other things, but... Uh-huh. Pretty descriptive, okay. Morning. Light. Excellent. When I hit generate... Thinking, there we go. Now notice that this is one option, but there actually gives me four options. I can choose down here some different options. It takes it a second to regenerate it, but I have different options that I can choose from. Pretty cool. Do you think this strategy might help kids learn the vocabulary? Maybe learn the phonics of decoding it, but then also, so it's you're still looking at the shape of the word. You're still looking at the individual letters and decoding it, but you might have a way to remember the meaning of what that word is because of the way the, the actual text is, uh, the way the font is displayed. Cool? Good stuff so far? All right, so uh, I'm going to show you another tool. You ready for the next tool? So also in Adobe text effects um, or Adobe Firefly, there was text to image. So has anyone played with this at all? Beth has played with it. Okay. So this is going to be another little tool, fun, fun play. And there's other uh, tools that do text to image. How many of you play with Canva? So text to image is in Canva as well. Right, have you played with that feature? So you haven't played with it in this tool, but you played with it in Canva. And then another one that is, um, again, to explore is called Dolly, kind of like Wally, -E, if you've seen the movie Wally, -E, but it's Dolly, D-A-L-L dash E. And this is another text to image tool. But I'm going to show you Adobe Firefly. Okay, because they all kind of work the same way. Um, the way it works is that you type in something you want to generate. So what do we want? What do we want? What do we want to generate? What do we want to picture? A roller coaster. Okay. Anything else? A, a wooden roller coaster. Okay. Uh, when? When is this roller coaster? Like in the summer? We go in the summer. Sure. Okay. okay, let's see what it does. Ugh. Now, note over here as it's thinking, it, there's some of the different options that I could have. But it usually most of these text to image tools generate four options that you can choose from. So. There is option number one, uh, kind of rickety. I don't know. I don't want to be on that roller coaster, right? Um, there's another one, right? There's another one, and there's another one. Okay, now why are they all so rickety? Well, note that I had selected art, right? What if I just said photo and changed it, right? So it was trying to make it this artistic roller coaster. What if we made it an actual roller coaster? Now these look a little bit more, that one's still a little weird, but these look like a wooden roller coaster that you might see at Six Flags, right? I passed that on the way here. <laughs> cool. So with, the, so, okay, so that's text to image, that's uh, text to text. Here's how the rest of this session is gonna work. Um, I'm going to talk, show you a couple other things. We're gonna have a little discussion and then I'm gonna turn you loose to play and investigate some of these tools for yourself and work amongst yourself, including you live stream, take some time to and play with these tools. Um, and then we're gonna come back and discuss what you like, what terrified you, 
what excited you, um, how you think you could use it, what strategies you might put in place for learners around using it. Because the big takeaway that I want you to have today is that it's not going away. Your students are going to be using this tool. They're going to be using ChatGPT, which I'm going to show you in a second. They're going to be using these image generating tools. So you need to know about them and need to give parameters around, OK, how are you going to use it? Um, just yesterday at the expo, I was talking to some of the students, the grad students, and they're like, I mean, we're in our second year of our program. We're like, oh, you're going to be interviewing for jobs at the end of next year. Like, yeah, it's like, I bet an interview question will be, tell us how you use AI. Because it can be used for so many different features and so many different uh, productivity uh, to be more productive. All right, so for instance, I thought I would use it to generate a slide deck. Meaning, so that's me, right? I put in, I was able to upload my picture and say cartoonify myself. And these are different versions of me in a tool called Blue Willow, uh, which is also free. But then there are presentation AIs where I could say, essentially what it is, I took the description of this session and I plugged it into AI um, called, I'll show you here. And I said, make a slide deck with this description. And so here's the slide deck that it's called the Magic Slides add-on for Google Slides. And it made a slide deck of the topic that I, I could have used this slide deck to talk about today. It says introduction, kind of defines what it is and then tells you about ChatGPT, right? It came up with the images, it pulled these images, some different little, just, just a couple words and then an image. And then we're gonna talk about how it can be used to engage students. Do you see how it's not exactly perfect? If I go to the slideshow, right? Because it saw the word engagement and it created an engagement ring, right? <laughs> which is not the engagement, just like when you said independence, I was thinking Independence Day, right? Or independence, and you were like, no, there's other independence. Um, so it's a start though, and then I could morph from there. Okay. I don't think it's meant to be just done. Like, hey, here's my tool from beginning to end. It's meant to be a start, a Kickstarter, and then you can make it and adapt it from there. You'll see what AI came up with is wildly different than what I as a human generated for the slide deck that I'm sharing with all of you. All right. So who here has not played with ChatGPT? I'm sure you've heard about it. Lance, you've never played with it. Okay, not played with it, not played with it, not played with it, not played with it. Okay, so a lot of people. So you have, have you even seen it at all? This is gonna be your first experience seeing it then. Okay, so ChatGPT looks like this. Uh, over on the left-hand side are other things I've created. Um, and in fact, just uh, last night I was playing with it and uh, I actually created a little video um, after seeing you guys. I was like, hmm. What if I could make a video on 3D printing? They were at the expo last night and they're doing a session on uh, on 3D printing later. The four, it's in the it's later on in the afternoon, right? Yeah. Um, it's like, what if I could make a video with ChatGPT on 3D printing? So here's what I did. I go over to ChatGPT. Um, I'll show you the video in a second. Let me just show you how it works. Let's say you wanted to write something, an essay on something. What do you want to write? What's your, what's your latest blog post about? What are you curious about in the world? Someone shout out something. Okay. Write a recommendation for rushing a sorority. Uh -huh. Now, I could put... <laughs> yeah. Like a recommendation letter, right? For some high school. Write a recommendation letter uh, for rushing a sorority. Now, what I'm doing here is called I'm writing a prompt. I'm prompting it and then it's going to respond. And there's there's levels of writing the prompt. Like I could say, pretend I'm a speech therapist giving a you know what I mean, right? Because carrying your speech therapist. No, 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 no. Okay. This is perfect. Um, I'm just saying you could say act as a fourth grader who is, you can tell the, the, the AI to pretend to be something else. 
right? So we're just going to say, I'll see how it did. So it's writing the letter. Notice it's giving you a space that says your name, your position, that you can go in and customize it. Um, it gives you the date, July 11th, and then here comes the letter, which reads, I hope this letter finds you in good health and high spirits. I'm writing this recommendation on behalf of, insert student's name, who has expressed her keen interest in joining your esteemed sorority. I've had the pleasure of knowing, and I won't read the whole thing, I'll go on, because you uh, hopefully by now you're impressed. Like, oh man, I, I would have had to generate that all myself. So now I'm using this AI to generate it. Um, as you continue to read it, what you're going to find, what I think you'll find, is that um, it's not really you, Karen. I definitely edited it. Right? You then took it and said, I want to say something about the person that's a little bit more specific, right? And it doesn't have any of your flair or your personality. But again, it's a start, right? So is that what you did? You used it for that? Yes, I edited it. I took a little resume and plugged in her information. And it was paragraphs about, you know, oh. <laughs> do I need the mic? Oh, yeah, you would. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Sorry. Um, so I put in information from a resume that the student sent me. I do know her. It wasn't like super sketch, but, you know, slightly. So I took the information from the resume, plugged it in. Um, it created this like paragraphs long, like four or five paragraphs letter about her taking the information from the resume. And it was all completely accurate according to the resume. But then I did edit it because I'm not going to say like, moreover, she is blah, 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 you know. So I did edit that, but I would say it saved me half an hour or more, you know, because when you're sitting there and you're just like, oh, what do I say? So that was helpful for me. So here's the question you have to ask. Is Karen a cheater? <laughs> no, she's not cheating, right? She's using her tools wildly, wisely, right? What were you going to say, Sheila? You, can you, Karen, do you mind running the mic over to? Absolutely. When I was trying to create the soul source letter, when I was trying to create the sole source, I did that with you and your team. And so to make you guys sound different, I just put in bullet points. Mm -hmm. And when I put in bullet points, what chat GPT also does is it pulls information about you from your, um, from the website. So, I mean, from the internet. So if there's stuff on there about, uh, about you on the internet, it will pull those things in about the people too. So it made you guys sound really good. I just couldn't separate you. No. So, so like you were saying, it won't, it's not, it won't be a canned um, response. So all of the sororities won't get the same information because you're putting in different information about the people and you could just do bullet points and it comes up. So I said, soul source. And then I just started putting, putting in bullet points and it sounded wonderful. Um, here's the thing. I just want to comment on that for a second. Chat GPT actually doesn't pull from the live internet. It has created, it it had its all it's its own database um that well, actually i don't know about chat gpt4 chat gpt3 does definitely does not pull from the live from it's got this large language model which we might be in right from work we've done in the past um and some of the stuff like depends i don't know what 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 it pulled from with our work but it might have been stuff that was like a year or a year and a half old you know like the books that i've written are over a year old so it might be that that kind of stuff yeah, question. A comment, really. Yeah. Um, I was. Here, thank you for running. I was in an. Is this it's working? It's okay. I was in a um, OT mental health uh, Facebook group, and they were, someone said, Does anyone have a handout about um, urge surfing for students who are trying to quit vaping? So I didn't even know what urge surfing was, but I typed it in and it created this handout and it was appropriate for um for kids who were quitting or trying to quit smoking or vaping very interesting so i like i learned about it and then i also created the handout and then just threw it back into the facebook chat and said i didn't make this chat gbt made it but if you want it here it is and yeah look how fast it did yeah mm. yeah so i watched 60 minutes had um i don't know if anybody saw the 60 minutes uh they aired it twice because it was so popular and it went into really in depth about just the whole science behind it and like you said where where's all this information coming from and then what it's going to look like in the future for for jobs for people what how are they going to use it if you're an accountant how are you going to use it if you're 
you know, a, a, a supply chain manager. But if, if anybody's really interested, I'd highly recommend that's really knowledgeable stuff. There you go. It gives there you some go. Really accurate information. There's a comment back there. While you're... Um, Couldn't this be dangerous for students to just auto-generate their assignments? So that's an excellent question, Brad. So uh, I'm going I'm to answer it very uh, cavalier, okay? No. <laughs> uh, and the reason I say that is because what we wanted to do is invite teachers to change the assignments so that they can use it. So if it's not don't use it, it's just like Karen did, use it, show us how you used it. And it's really more about learning than getting through an assignment, right? So what did you learn by doing it? What are your thoughts? Okay. <laughs> okay. I think it changes the game, right? So it's not really about doing the assignment anymore. It really focuses on the learning. Why am I doing that assignment in the first place? All right, you ready for the 3D printed video? So with ChatGPT4, so chat, notice up here at the top, there's ChatGPT, Chat. Chat GPT 3.5. It's free. Anyone can sign up. You can use it. Chat GPT 4 is $20 a month. I'm not, I don't work for OpenAI. I'm not here to sell it. I did sign up for the $20 a month because I do presentations like this and I wanted to learn about it and I wanted to find out what it does. And what really sold me is that it has plugins. So it works with other tools. And there's another tool out there called Vizsla. So what it what I asked it to do is is I asked it to use Vizsla. So here's a little Vizsla. And I said, um, come on. I said, use Vizsla to create a video on how 3D printing can be used to create supports for people with disabilities. And then it gave me a little outline and then it created the video. And so here's the video right here. I'm gonna show it to you right now. It's about a minute long. Has audio, but the, uh, the the if this has captions. <laughs> you can see what it's done is pulled all these little clips together, stitched them together. It tells a little story. Has even clips about this person Alex who uses a three D three D printed support tool. About a, about a minute long. What do you think? It has audio too. Uh, it's just we don't have the speakers hooked up. I could see applications for this with like social stories for students um, as a video, which is really cool because typically we're printing out pictures and typing out, we read and sit. But having kids scan a QR code and have a video about a social story about this thing that they're going to do, or maybe some sort of like um, daily living task that they need to do, like having their instructions of here's how you would, you know, set up this silverware for dinner or I don't know. Exciting. Yeah. Okay. So what you just did, Karen, is what I'm actually thinking the group's going to do. So let me show you, let me set you up here. Um, so get the captions back on. Okay. So I showed you some demos, right? Of some different tools, Adobe Firefly, ChatGPT. If you're already familiar with Canva and you have a, an account for Canva, it's, as educators, you can have a free account. There's a text to image tool in there. So maybe you want to go and explore where well, there's text to image. How do I do that in Canva? I use Canva. Go explore there. So there's some different tools that you looked at. Uh, Dolly was another one. Uh, again, like Wally, D A L L dash E. These are ones to play with. Um, and then I'm going to ask you to, to come back and um, uh, populate a Padlet with your ideas, just like you were just doing. Okay. So before I turn you loose on that, I want to see, and now if you already know the answer to this riddle, because you've seen this slide before, don't answer it. But, but has anyone, if you haven't seen this, this, this is a riddle I have up on the screen. Can you just, I just want to take a second to see if you can solve this riddle. What do touch screens, flexible seating, word prediction, voice dictation, on-demand video content, and computers at seats have in common? Anyone in the live stream can play along too. <laughs> what was it? He said germs. Germs. Yeah. You touch them, you spread germs. Yeah. It's the it's a good answer. It's not the right answer for the riddle. Access. Access, tell me more. 
well, that's immediate access to like anybody could access. So it's like universal to everybody. <laughs> Access, I'll re repeat it, access, um, like universal tools for anybody, right? Okay, close. Someone I heard yell out uh, accommodations. Who said accommodations? Accommodations. Okay, that's the closest to the right answer to the riddle, but it's not quite the right answer to the riddle. Assistive technology? It is sort of, I mean, these are all certainly things that uh, are assistive technology because they might help people with disabilities. I felt like that was too easy, but huh? Again, it's closer to accommodations. Did I hear correct? Mm, they they are now used as part of Universal designing design. the educational experience universally for lots of people. Yes, that's true. Not the right answer to the riddle, right? But that's true. So here it was. Um, didn't we hear in the morning uh, introductions that this is going to be an annual event, right? But it actually existed uh, uh, years ago, and then again, in a different form. But there was a there was a presentations, and there was a like an expo years ago, right? Alatech. Pal what was it called? Alatech. Alatech. And even before that, with Pam Elder. So back in the day, if you went and learned about the, um, assistive technology and accommodations, uh, who got access to touch screens first? you would probably see in the vendor hall people having something called a magic touch window that you'd put over this old CRT monitor and you'd touch with your, with your hand because you might have trouble accessing the computer with a mouse, right? But now who uses touch screens? Everybody. So yes, there would be an accommodation, but now we all use them. Um, what's something that started for people with disabilities blossomed to be something the masses use? All right, what about flexible seating? Uh, OT, did you ever do an, an evaluation to get a kid a vestibular disc, a little rubber disc or something that they could sit on because those for that first grader just is not sitting at their desk or the kindergartner needs to move, right? But now how many of you have flexible seating in your classes or in your schools? Because we've learned movement is good for everybody. We wanna be, we want to encourage movement. Why is it just that one kid? What started out as students with disabilities now is becoming the norm as a universal design, Brad, uh, in, in classrooms. Word prediction. Who are the first people to use word prediction? I can't tell you how many evaluations I did to get this specialized software for something called, well, Dragon's different, but that's, that's speech to text. That's this, by the way, voice dictation. You're just one, you're one, co-writer, co-writer, right? But now who uses word prediction? And what is this if it's not souped up fancy word prediction? Right? Did you see how it was generating word by word by word? What it's doing, Sheila, has got this giant model of language, and it's pulling to put word after word after word, quickly analyzing what would be the next best word to go in the in the sentence, just like word prediction. But who are the first people to use word prediction? People with disabilities, and then it blossomed for the rest of us. Same thing was with, with yes. right? <laughs> just like. Um, just like voice to text, right? How many of you use that today already? Use that little microphone to send a message, right? But who, Dragon Dictate was the first and we did special evaluations to get kids Dragon Dictate and now it's something we, we use. So I don't have to go on. What I wanna show you is that people with disabilities lead the way when it comes to innovations and assistive technology leads the way. It, it, we, we could have predicted that AI would be coming because word prediction is a thing that people were using, well, people with disabilities were using. There you go. Okay, so I just wanted to, I wanted to take a minute to talk about how, how that, how that, how there's a pattern there that te technologies that people with disabilities are using right now is something that we could be looking for as something that'll eventually become to the masses. All right, one last thing before I turn you loose on this Padlet and show you the Padlet. Um, there's another uh, website that I think everybody should know about. It's called futurepedia.io. Um, and what that is, is a website 
that categorizes all these different AI tools that are out there. Like, how did you know about Vizsla, Chris, that tool that made the video, right? Um, there's all these different tools that are coming out. So you could do, it's AI to help you pick your AI, right? <laughs> Right. So that might be one to go to go and play with when I turn you loose here in a second is let me go to Futurepedia and see what some of these different tools are out, are out there um, or go to ChatGPT and play if you haven't done that before. And then what I'm going to ask you to do is just do what Karen did is that um, we're going to brainstorm some ideas and really think about how can it be implemented for the learners we support. Right? Um, and then I have a Padlet. So the Padlet has got categories broken down. Um, so a Padlet is a place, is, if you're not familiar with Padlet, it's like a giant sticky board. Uh, and it was put sticky notes and there's columns that I've created. So there's reading, writing, STEAM, studying and research, executive functioning, social emotional regulation, professional learning, miscellaneous, and then this last one that's hidden off to the side says other considerations. This is for your like, mm, yeah, but, or oh, I don't know. And the idea is, is that you just add an idea underneath. Okay, here's how I think it could be used for reading in the same way that you saw Karen brainstorm how it could be used. Here's how I think it could be used for writing. Um, and just put the name of the tool and the strategy. What One little bonus points. If you can think about the strategy, what do I mean by strategy? We mean it starts with a verb. It's some sort of action. A kid is going to use it to do this. So if, when you're typing that in a Padlet, if you don't start with a verb, it's no big deal, but you get bonus points if you could start it with a verb, okay? All right, so that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna take the next 15, 20 minutes, discuss amongst yourselves, try and play, add stuff to the Padlet, and we'll see what kind of strategy we come up with, what you thought, uh, how this could be used, all these different tools, to help design more inclusive experiences for everybody. Cool, and I'll walk around and help and brainstorm and share. Cool, same thing out there, live stream, you do it and we'll come back, put your ideas in the pad. So what are some thoughts? Let's have a conversation about it. Uh, Karen, can I ask you to, I can, I can, yeah, I can do it too if you want. Okay. It's just, I know they got the camera on me, so. What did you think? What did you play with? What are some of these takeaways? I see them here in the Padlet, but this the, the, the reason the Padlet exists isn't really for us to talk about what you wrote in the Padlet. It's that when you go back to this, what do they say in that session? You have a shared note-taking place and maybe just to show you Padlet if you hadn't used Padlet before. So what are, you, what are some takeaways? What are some aha moments? What, is, what scared you? What uh, excited you? We actually didn't make it to the Padlet. We'll get it in there, but um, we talked about learning medical terminology using that text to image so they can tie the, the word to what it actually is. Aha. Uh -huh. Interesting. Okay. Well, let me ask the, you. The font. I'm sorry. The font. The first thing. Yeah. To the very first thing. So you can remember what the term is just as you're sort of, yeah, learning vocabulary. Okay. Love it. Um, so we talked yesterday, um, I'm a student at Montevallo, and we have just really, the only thing we've been told at, about AI is that we can, they can tell if we've cheated. That's like the only thing we don't know in terms of like how it can help us. So I was just looking and um, looking at ChatGPT and looking at visual schedules for therapy and things like that, and just really looking at how it could help us. And I think it'll definitely be a, a longer journey. But um, like I said, the only thing we've been told is like, basically don't use it because we know uh, or they know that we've cheated. So it's going to be a long journey. Once upon a time, my aunt Sue told me, Chris, don't pee in our pool because if you pee in the pool, we put a special chemical that it's going to make it purple all around you. And we're going to know. And I totally believe that if I peed in that pool, it was going to be purple, right? <laughs> Why am I saying that story? Because yes, there are tools that will tell you if AI, it will give you a likelihood. Like um, it's 72% of this was probably generated by AI. Like th at least that's what I've seen. Not yes, it was or it wasn't, right? In Karen's example, right? Karen used it to, to generate, to, to, to start something, but then you customize the heck out of it to make it something. So, so again, is that cheating, you know? What I'm hoping it does, we were having this discussion over here, is force the educators to change their instruction a little bit, say, well, yeah, go use it and, and let me give you a different uh, 
task to do, invite you to engage in a different task. Sheila, what are you thinking? Everything new they said was cheating. The calculator was cheating. Word prediction was cheating. Everything touch screen, everything we've done, they've said is cheating. It's just like, I think it's done. Johnston has that video. Um, what, what's that video called? Uh, a case against assistive technology. Yeah. Because everything you start with that's new is considered cheating. Yeah. But there's no way it's cheating. You're going to have a teacher proof the work anyway. You're going to, you're going to change it, like you said, to do your stuff. So I don't. Think and, and Sheila, I'll say that whole word cheating, especially when we in relation to um, AI and education is do you think education is a competition? Because if you think it's a competition, then maybe that's there's Then we can use the word cheating. But if you think it's a collaborative space where your kids are working together, then how could it be cheating? There's no, there's no such thing. It's just learning and you're getting more information. You're, you're uh, critically thinking about it. Your mind is growing and expanding in new ways. There's the, it's the difference between learning and school and <laughs> getting through school, that's, which is a different thing. Right? Other thoughts? Another thing Sonia and I were talking about is we write our AAC assessments. And obviously we have to make them very specifically about the user that we're writing about. However, if you're a new if you're if you're new to doing an AAC assessment and you need to improve writing skills as far as explaining someone's receptive language skills or their expressive language skills, like just helping with wording and helping. So I've, I've actually contemplated putting it in there. She reviews all of our AAC assessments and, you know, they're quite extensive and it takes some time to do those. And we really do want to make those customized for each individual, of course, like yeah. that is absolutely necessary. So we would never put something in AI and then just send it off to her. Like she would just be like, what is this nonsense? But <laughs> I mean, you know, I think for some folks who may have difficulty with that creative writing piece of it, I think this could be helpful. So I actually did that. So I had to do an AAC evaluation um, for a student in a private school. And I, uh, what I did was I took my notes like I always do. And then I had these bullet notes and I took the bullet notes and I said, right, imagine you are a speech language pathologist doing an assistive technology AAC evaluation here are the notes, put this into prose uh, and a professional writing that would show up in a report, something like that. Mm -hmm. I could actually look up the prompt because it's still in my list, but that idea, right? And then it took those bullet points and it fleshed them out. Who was saying that earlier that you get to take bullet points? And then from there, I went and I tweaked it and said, okay, well, that's not exactly what happened. Let me change this. That's not exactly what they did. Let me change this. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Again, as a tool to help me get started. But comparatively of how you might have done that previously, was it faster? Well, so was it faster? Great question. Uh, that's why I might do it. If, yeah. You know, the answer is out, so. probably not okay. yet. Meaning okay. uh, it was the first time I'd ever done it. We don't do many AAC evaluations anymore. Okay. We have a different way that we consider assistive, uh, well, assistive technology in general, but AAC. This was sort of old school. I had to go do it this old school way. So point being, um, I felt like it was a learning curve and I wanted to do it to see if it would help I or if it, it would not, you know, <laughs> yeah. and uh, it did, it helped. Um, and I think if I did it more, I'd give him faster. I'd know what prompts to write a little bit better, you know, okay, it's like any tool, you know, like when you first used a calculator, uh, where are the buttons? What is that special button over on the right? I don't know what that does. And then you eventually learn how to use it. You know. All right. Other thoughts, other takeaways, other other applications you might you think you might use it for, or have used it. Okay. Jason, right? Yes. I use it to rewrite a lot of what I've already written just to get an abstract perspective and maybe chatbot will write something in a way that I like more, uh -huh. but it's my own work going into it and it's just modified my work coming out. So I don't consider that cheating. Uh -huh. Totally not. All right, uh, Brad and Lance, now that you've seen it, Lance. I, so Lance, I'm gonna tell a quick story. At ATIA, which is back in January, I was telling Lance about, Lance uses a, a communication device. I was telling Lance about it. And I said, have you, have you played with ChatGPT yet? 
right? And Lance, you're super fast. Remember just at the expo last night, these three guys were talking to Lance and they were blown away how fast Lance can do direct select on his device. And you were like, Lance was like, I don't think, I, don't, I think this is going to slow me down. I don't think, so, right? Is that, do you remember that conversation? Yeah. Um, so now that you've seen it, do you think of any applications that you could use it in your life? Or do you think you could use it at all to help like when you'd have to do a presentation and you're generating all the text or you still think it might be too slow? And same question for you, Brad. Do you think uh, this afternoon we're going to do this, this lunch and we sent you questions ahead of time and you generated all those answers ahead of time, right? So do you think you would use ChatGPT and be like, close enough, let me just customize it? Or do you feel like you're faster uh, going word by word? Maybe you got to play with it more? It might. He said it would help, I think. It might. What did you think, Lance? It might help with writing a speech, but it might interrupt my work work flow. It might help with writing a speech, but it might interrupt my workflow. Mm -hmm. I actually like writing, so I probably would not use it for that. I actually like writing, so I probably would not use it for that. Totally. I mean, you could imagine someone who doesn't like writing that could totally use it. And But if you're in the workflow in your workspace, uh, yeah, I could see how it would slow you up. I like doing this. Why would I use that tool? Yeah. Cool. All right. Other takeaways or thoughts before we move on to the final two minutes? All right. Thank you, Karen, by the way. So I made a list of, of, of ideas that you can go look at um, about how Mm, maybe we could use it for some of these tools. Some of them I saw were in the Padlet already, like checking accessibility that maybe the AI could check for accessibility, um, summarizing details from in notes. Um, uh, something I think we could use it for is maybe writing better IEP goals. Uh, oftentimes we write these goals and they're we're like, how are we going to measure that? We write measurable goals based on maybe a present level where you stripped out the student's name, right? Uh, these might all be ways. I mentioned talking with tech, the podcast that we do, we interviewed a guy named Bruce Alter, who, um, who's on the podcast, talking, he's, he's on the cutting edge, he's, I get an email one, once a day from Bruce about the latest article about AI, AI or um, what's happening in his, his school district, and so we interviewed him on the podcast, um, and I'll just leave that as a little bit of a precursor for the afternoon session I'm doing on coding, where we're going to play with this robot, if you come back. We're playing with robots and learning about coding um, because one of the one of you I think you put it in the Padlet right um, AI can also write code so it, do kids need to learn how to code or do need learn do kids need to learn how to use AI to write the code and then uh, alter it and change it in the same way that they that you are that we were talking about or like Karen did um, with writing the sorority letter. So come back in the afternoon for that. All right, that brings us to 1045. Any other final thoughts? Was this worth your time? Yes. Did you learn a lot of new stuff? Yeah. Are you both equally terrified and excited? Yes. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right, thanks everybody. Thanks live stream.